Jesus command with glowing hearts we see the rise the true north strong and free from far and wide O Canada we stand on guard for thee God keep our land glorious and free O Canada we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Welcome to the 30th Annual Junior Achievement London and District Business Hall of Fame Gala. My name is Angela Abdella, and I'm thrilled to be your co-host for this evening's festivities. It's my pleasure to share the screen tonight with my fellow MC. He's a graduate of both JA's company program and the Ivy School of Business, and is now based in Toronto, working with Wealthsimple, one of the fastest growing financial technology startups in the country where his focus is expansion into the U.S. market. Please help me welcome the epitome of JA success, Mr. David A. Dian. Thanks, Ange, and it's great to be co-hosting with you again. Although I will say I'm missing the networking aspect of this amazing event, I always love having the opportunity to meet and chat with the laureates, past and present. They're such an inspiration, and they're always so gracious with their time and knowledge. That said, pivoting to a virtual event has been really interesting, exciting, really. In my time at Junior Achievement, we learned we had to be able to change direction on a moment's notice and adapt to whatever circumstances presented themselves. That's how a business becomes and stays successful. Absolutely right, David. A virtual event also provides an opportunity for people to experience the gala who may not otherwise attend. So this is an opportunity to expand our reach and share the inspirational stories of our laureates with an even wider audience. COVID-19 has certainly impacted life as we know it, but it can't stop JA from recognizing the many accomplishments of this year's laureates. Kyle McDonald, founder and chief executive officer of Harbor Grace Holdings, Inc. And Ewart and Edwin McLaughlin, founders of E&E &E McLaughlin Warehousing Limited. And to our audience this evening, thank you. We're so excited to have you join us for a virtual celebration. I know that our laureates are celebrating this evening with some of the key people in their lives. We're just sorry we couldn't celebrate together in person, but it's gonna be a fabulous evening regardless. And let's look at the bright side. There are a lot of benefits to having a virtual gala. For one, we got, uh, we got off camera snacks. Tonight I'm gonna to be feasting on some delicious Timbits. Hey, those look amazing. I can almost taste them from here. Do you mind? Not at all. Thanks. There we go. No problem. Now, before we get started, I do want to point out that this evening's celebration will include a number of videos, so your household connectivity and Wi-Fi could have an effect on the quality of your experience. Good point, David. Now, for those of you who follow JA on social media, you already know that we have a spectacular silent auction taking place. The bidding actually started last week and will continue until October 29th at 11 a.m. We've got some beautiful items in the auction this year, thanks to all of our silent auction contributors. We especially want to thank Gordon's Gold, who were very generous with the donation of numerous pieces of jewelry. This is the perfect opportunity to do your holiday shopping and help JA provide valuable programming at the same time. I also want to give a huge shout out to our Business Hall of Fame co-chair, Candace Campbell who's worked diligently behind the scenes to ensure that our first ever Business Hall of Fame online auction is a huge success. Thank you so much, Candice. And in addition to our silent auction, we've got a 50-50 draw happening. Our 50-50 total as of today is already at $500. 
50-50 tickets will continue to be sold through November 2nd at 12 noon. Both are great opportunities to raise funds to support the ongoing delivery of JA programs throughout Southwestern Ontario at no cost to students. We're gonna periodically provide that URL to get silent auction and 50-50 tickets on the screen below uh, so you know how to connect. And be sure to check out and share through all your social media channels so your friends also have an opportunity. And speaking of social media, let's get that hashtag LBHF2020 trending tonight. I love that there's still a week to participate in both the auction and the raffle. I think it adds to the excitement. It also gives me a chance to continue bidding. And now that it's my great pleasure to introduce Mayor Ed Holder, bringing greetings on behalf of the City of London. Hi, I'm Ed Holder. On behalf of the City of London and my colleagues at City Council, I'm pleased to join you here this evening. Let me also acknowledge those who are taking in the proceedings virtually from home and elsewhere. Let me also give a huge shout out to the staff and volunteers of JA because it's you and your commitment to business excellence that makes this work. The individuals we're recognizing tonight are amongst the best and the brightest in London and all of Canada. You represent the epitome of entrepreneurial spirit because you are the risk takers and the backbone of our economy. Now, over the last several months since the onset of the pandemic, I know that backbone has been strained and tested like never before. It's been battered and bruised. To say the least, it's been tough but not nearly as tough as each of you. You know, it's often said that we don't take enough time to celebrate our successes here in London. And I know that by being here, you join me and all Londoners in proving that notion wrong. Because I firmly believe that when business succeeds, we all succeed. And as I've often said, taking care of business means taking care of people. So thank you all so much for the work that you do and for taking care of Londoners. And on behalf of London City Council, Accept my heartfelt thanks and gratitude for the work you do to grow our city's economy, along with the opportunities you provide for individuals to grow as people. Each of you deserves recognition and appreciation. I wish you a wonderful evening tonight and my very best as we move London forward together. Wow is right. I can personally attest to the great things that JA has to offer. And I'd also like to thank Mayor Ed Holder for his greeting. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my utmost pleasure to introduce to you a very special lady who I've had the pleasure of watching pour her heart into JA for years. This is someone who believes in investing in youth as the global leaders of tomorrow. Under her leadership, the program has grown immensely in reach, grand presence, and community involvement, benefiting thousands of students across Southwestern Ontario. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the heart and soul of JA Southwestern Ontario, our president and CEO, Bev Robinson. Thanks, David, for those kind words. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the accomplishments of this year's laureates, Kyle McDonald and Ewart and Edwin McLaughlin. The celebrating must go on, so tonight we are live in your homes. I want to share what's been going on with junior achievements since mid-March when our world changed in how we operate. I'm proud to share with you that JA quickly pivoted in March 
and transitioned all of our programs online. I could not be prouder of the work my team did creatively with incredible enthusiasm and passion to ensure teachers and students could continue receiving JA's essential programs. The students of our after-school program, like the real world, continue to operate their businesses from their homes online. We always said our programs teach students about the real world, and wow, that principle was tested. The students experienced what all businesses were going through. They celebrated their successes and received awards virtually for the first time like tonight. One of our companies won the Canadian Company of the Year Award in the Social Enterprise category. They will compete in December in the JA Americans competition. JA offers lots of opportunities outside of the regular program offerings. We created an online camp and delivered this new format in August with great success. We piloted several live virtual program deliveries with a few businesses during the summer. We want to explore and offer more. These unprecedented times have provided many silver linings for junior achievement. We now have three new program delivery models that will allow us to reach more students, particularly in our rural areas. JA's new online presence allows broader reach where geography doesn't matter. Our volunteers have a new virtual volunteer opportunity they can do from their home offices. They can share their life experience, wisdom and expertise with students anywhere, really. We are just starting to explore this innovative opportunity. JA's mission is to reach all students and I'm excited to say we are innovating and pivoting to do, do just that. Like our laureates, JA students, volunteers, board members, and staff are agile, tenacious, determined, always learning and adjusting to the times. A teacher who recently delivered our Dollars with Sense program shared this with us. Always worth doing the program. The students will grow into active citizens and we need this knowledge to succeed in life. Another teacher provided the following feedback. JA's program is extremely well aligned with the expectations in the new math curriculum on financial literacy. No matter what challenges we face, whether COVID or social injustice, JA's mission is timely to develop the skills youth need for economic stability and timeless to get us through today and tomorrow, no matter what the disruption and innovation. JA is relevant and will always be relevant. Thank you for being a part of the supporting JA team. Speaking of support, one of JA's biggest cheerleaders was the late Braille Cop. For decades, he lent his generous support to growing JA and helping develop tomorrow's leaders. Today, his son, Steve, continues this support. The Braille Cop Distinguished Business Leadership Award was established to recognize a student who is a role model, leads with integrity, and generates value. Please welcome Steve Kopp to present this award. I am honored to announce the winner of an award that Junior Achievement has established in my father's name. The Braille Kopp Distinguished Leadership Award is presented to a JA student who exemplifies leadership qualities for which my dad was known and admired. This year's recipient, Angela Lau. Angela, a two-time president in her four years participating, has always been a positive and encouraging influence in the company program and dedicated to excellence. She exemplifies my father's business leadership and qualities. I'd like to congratulate Angela and welcome her to share the impact JA has had on her. Here is Angela now. Thank you, Bev and Steve, for the kind introduction. Good evening, everyone. My name is Angela Liu, and I'm the recipient of this year's JA Southwestern Ontario Braille Cough Distinguished Business Leadership Award. I'm honored to be here virtually today to represent JA and talk about how much this organization has impacted me. 
My involvement with JA's company program started right in grade 9 and continued all the way throughout high school to grade 12. The company program is where you create and manage your own business alongside a group of like-minded high school students. At the beginning of my JA journey, I was a nervous and timid grade 9, facing the daunting new reality of being in high school. Sometime in September that year, my best friend's mom signed up my best friend and me for the company program, which I knew nothing about. So when I was dropped off for my very first meeting, little did I know how much my life would change just because of this program. In every company, there is a management team, which includes a president and VPs who lead the different departments. In my very first year, I did run for several positions, but my reading directly from paper skills and monotone voice certainly did not impress my peers. So that year, I was a director. And looking back on it, I think I learned more that year by not being on the management team. Instead, I was able to observe my peers and see the amazing leaders that they were. They could speak in front of people without messing up. So inspired by them, that was when I made it a goal for myself that by grade 12, I would too become a leader and positive role model to others. Moving on to grade 10, I knew that I had to take that next step of becoming a part of my company's management team in order to get closer to my goal. Although my title was a little long, being the VP of Health and Safety, Corporate Social Responsibility, and the Environment, it sounded impressive. That year, with my company, I attended the annual London Lifestyle Home Show at the Western Ferry District Agriplex, and I think that was the start of putting myself out there. I had never pitched and sold anything to strangers before that, so it was a little scary at first. However, I went from having zero experience to selling the most out of my company that weekend. Furthermore, I represented my company in JA's Dragon Lair pitch competition that year, and attended many more sales events as well. In grade 11, I felt like I was prepared enough to take the experience I got in grade 10 and use it to run for president, and I was successful. That year challenged me as a leader, as it was now I who had to initiate the discussion, make sure we were on track, delegate tasks, and a whole lot more. Although we had tough and stressful times, ultimately we were able to get through them as a team. To all of our surprise, we won best pitch and best product in Dragon's Lair, which goes to show how much our hard work and commitment paid off. Then of course came grade 12. My time in high school had gone by so fast and I couldn't believe it was my final year of JA. As the president of my company again, I was able to utilize what I had learned the previous year to better guide my company through the ups and downs of running a business. For me, Company program has changed who I am in the best way possible. I was able to learn about what business is hands-on by going through the process of starting up a company, overseeing a team, setting and reaching goals, and experiencing each department from finance to human resources. I think what I've gained most, however, is not just the business knowledge, but also the transferable skills that I've been able to develop these past four years. Skills like communication, problem solving, organization, professionalism, and of course, leadership and teamwork that I will certainly utilize in the future. I'm sure if you'd met me in grade nine, you wouldn't even recognize me as the same person I am now. One, I had braces in grade nine, but also I was much more shy and hesitant. But through the opportunities that this program has given me, I've been able to push myself out of my comfort zone many times and have become a confident public speaker and role model to others. I've been able to take what Jay has taught me and use it in school for presentations and taking on other leadership roles, like on my high school student council. Furthermore, I was able to work for JA in the summer of 2019 as a camp counselor for their summer business camps and volunteered virtually this year as well. In grade 9, I would have never thought that I could lead a team of peers to become a successful company. And looking back, I think my grade 9 self would be very impressed with everything I've accomplished. I'm proud of how much I've grown, and I think the fact that I'm here today 
proves that I did end up reaching my goal of becoming an inspirational leader to others. Just like how I was inspired so many years ago by the student leaders I met in grade nine and the countless others I've met along the way, I hope to have encouraged someone else to take a risk and put yourself out there. Never trying at all won't result in any growth. So always try your best and even if you fail, it's okay because you can always learn from your mistakes and do better next time. Now, before I end off this speech, I'd like to thank JA for giving students like me the opportunity to participate in this program. There's never been a more fun way to learn about business and the experience has truly been life-changing. Thank you to the staff, all the volunteers and sponsors. Without all of you investing in our futures, none of this would have been possible. And lastly, I thank you to my peers. For all the companies I've been in, We've always built each other up and come through as a team in the end, despite all the challenges we face together. I'm forever thankful for JA and hope to continue supporting them in the future. Thank you so much for having me this evening and I wish you all a wonderful night. Junior achievement prepares youth for success and that strengthens our community and our economy. JA helps youth develop the skills and attitudes needed to become strong leaders. JA provides the experience youth need to achieve success in their personal and professional lives. JA teaches students life-changing skills, enhancing the knowledge they learn in school with business acumen. It builds confidence in their ability to truly make a difference in our community and beyond. And JA inspires youth to become leaders of innovative change. Thank you to you, to those sponsors. Congratulations, Angela. I think our dear friend Braille would be very pleased about you receiving this honor. Your future looks bright. We're so thrilled to have so many sponsors on board this year. One of those is a community leader that has been a strong supporter of JA Southwestern Ontario for 13 years now. It's my absolute pleasure to introduce you to our platinum sponsor, for the 2020 London and District Business Hall of Fame, Branch Manager of Liberal Credit Union, Mr. Ferris Halabi. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ferris Halabi, Liberal Credit Union's Community Manager for our London East Branch. I would have loved for all of us to enjoy the traditional gala with dinner and drinks, but we have to adapt to the new world. So I'm having a drink on your behalf. I hope you're having one out there too. I'm excited to be here on behalf of Libra, along with my colleagues, and very proud to support this 30th annual London and District Virtual Business Hall of Fame. 30 years, 30 years of acknowledging and thanking local business leaders for their contribution to the growth and development of the London area. 30 years of recognizing the leadership it takes to cultivate new partnerships, to encourage fresh ideas, and to develop stronger collaboration among London businesses. Please join me in a virtual round of applause congratulating Junior Achievement on a job well done. <laughs> Libro is passionate about collaborating with groups such as JA who are making meaningful and lasting contributions right here in London across southwestern Ontario. Our passion stems from our purpose to grow prosperity across our region. You are all here because you share our passion to live and work in a community that's thriving, a community that's growing, a community that goes above and beyond the usual to serve the needs, wants of the people who live here. You are here because like Libro, you want to make London the best place it can be to raise a family, to spend recreation time, to develop new business and see it thrive. At Libro, we invest 100% of our profits back into our communities that means every dollar we earn is returned to the Southwestern Ontario economy. Whether it's through investments made in our communities via sponsorships and donations, or through our partnerships with social enterprises and innovation centers, and through shares and profits paid out to local customers, our owners, including businesses. Tonight's event celebrates three individuals who are strong business leaders and entrepreneurs who also put 100% into what they do to help London grow and thrive. 
They take the lead with innovation, service excellence, and outstanding commitment to improve London and the surrounding area. They are mentors, leaders, and examples to the next generation of business professionals and entrepreneurs being guided by junior achievement and excellent programs. Congratulations to laureates Kylie McDonald and Ewart and Edwin McLaughlin. We value your contribution. We value your passion and your commitment to success. We truly appreciate all that you do to help make London a great place that it is. And we certainly wouldn't mind having a conversation with you about your banking needs. So let's connect after this speech. Thank you again for Junior Achievement for continuing to host this incredible event. And I hope everybody has a safe and wonderful evening. Thank you, Ferris. Junior Achievement is a stronger organization because of the commitment of sponsors like Libro. So earlier we mentioned there's a silent auction, but I don't think we've created enough stir about it. We've got some pretty cool items donated from our very generous silent auction contributors, including Gordon, Gold, Gordon's Gold Jewelers, Downtown London, Anderson Craft Ales, Talbot Marketing, Nuts for Cheese, Kwai Duven Winery, Black Fi Beverage Company, and many more. There are more than 100 goodies up for grabs with something in everyone's price range. So place your bids today and throughout next week. All of the money raised will support JA delivery, uh, JA del program delivery so that we can help develop the Business Hall of Fame laureates of the future. Worldwide Junior Achievement is a recognized leader in business education, inspiring and preparing youth are, are we hot, for Dave? success for over a hundred years. Junior Achievement is Canada's largest youth and business education organization. Dave, are we hot? And students who participate in JA programs are more likely to pursue higher education, be financially literate, launch businesses and create jobs, and become future innovators that bring positive change to our world. All of this success is the direct result of partnerships with many exceptional businesses and individuals like you. This generous support appears in so many ways. The more than 375 dedicated volunteers who shared their professional expertise and experience this year. Or the many amazing corporations and local organizations who provide critical financial support. This support enables JA to grow programming allowing as many youth as possible to benefit through blended and online learning. JA is constantly innovating to provide new opportunities for students to reach their full potential. This year, over 5,000 elementary and high school students in London and area were able to participate in JA Southwestern Ontario programs. There is more to be done as providing these JA experiences is more important now than ever. It's an honor to be one of the many companies, organizations, and donors investing in the strength of our youth and a bright future for our community and beyond. Together, we can create an even brighter future for youth in our community. The London and District Business Hall of Fame was created to honor those individuals who have shown a unique vision amongst their peers, shown true legacy to move others to achieve their goals, and shown true integrity throughout their lives and built a legacy in our community that will enrich all those who follow. By recognizing their achievements, the life of each London and District Business Hall of Fame inductee stands as a testament to the positive impact they've made and acts as a role model for enterprising young people for generations to come, including, but certainly not limited, to those who participate in JA programs. It's now my great pleasure to introduce our first Laureate Tribute video of the evening, honoring Kyle McDonald, founder and chief executive officer of Harbor Grace Holdings, Inc. Strategist, smart, intuitive, hardworking, understanding, and caring are words so many people use to describe Kyle McDonald. As the visionary leader and dynamic founder behind Phoenix Interactive Design, Kyle's world-renowned London-based software company changed the global landscape of self-service banking as she did the unthinkable and broke into the deeply entrenched oligopoly of the ATM industry. 
Kyle's passion and no-nonsense approach to making smart business decisions has earned international respect and appreciation from her colleagues, the banking tech sector, and her competitors. Her strong vision and relentless passion for pursuing her dreams earned Kyle numerous accolades throughout her career, including the distinction of being twice recognized by RBC as a Woman Entrepreneur of the Year, earning the Ontario Global Traders Award, a Deloitte Technology Fast 50 Award winner, and two-time winner of the London Business Achievement Award. I would say Kyle's most valued quality would be her ability to build a strategic vision and then move the hearts and minds of those around her towards that vision. I remember first meeting her and I was uh, very impressed with the way we met. She introduced her executive team and you could tell that she'd built a culture there at Phoenix, a real team culture. Everybody participated, everybody asked questions, everybody was involved. She was the first female client I'd ever had that started their own business from scratch. Kyle was born in Toronto and attended Malvern Collegiate, where she was involved in many extracurricular activities, which helped further her drive for success. While earning her degree at Ivy School of Business at Western University, Kyle gained an insider's perspective and tremendous respect for retail banking while working as a teller for Canada Trust. After graduating in 1982, Kyle went to work for interactive media company CableShare, developing marketing programs that appeared on kiosks at sites such as shopping malls, automotive trade shows, and yes, financial institutions. In 1987, Kyle set her sights on becoming a market disruptor to the ATM industry's oligopoly as she began preparing for world domination in the fast-moving software business in the banking industry. Starting out with only two employees and building to over 240 employees with offices around the world. With its sophisticated and user-friendly ATM software platform, Phoenix revolutionized the self-service ATM channel when it introduced the world's first intelligent, multi-vendor, centrally managed ATM software application. It didn't take long for the competition to take notice of Kyle's success. Global domination, I mean, she wouldn't be joking uh, when she said that that would actually be the vision and if she was still at the helm, they would still be on the path, for sure. Canada, of course, was the main base for the starting point, but then that moved into the U.S. into some smaller banks. But her big one was in Australia, uh, St. George Banks and a few of the other banks and introducing her software there. Um, and even though it's international, it was still, they spoke English, so the cultures were fairly similar. And, and Australians have a very similar culture that to Canadians, easy going and very polite. And so, um, but again, it had its challenges. You know, a 24 hour flight to get there. So it's no easy feat to get over there and building a team uh, and from that distance. So she learned a lot from that. In Phoenix's lab, there were two banners. One said global domination is a full-time job and right beside it, it takes, just, it takes years to acquire a customer, but only seconds to lose one. This was a reminder to all of us how important it was to take care of our customers and how important it was to deliver on all of our promises. Kyle's leadership style was evident from the international boardroom to the boardroom of Phoenix. Her leadership style was an example for all employees to follow. But Kyle was always a very strong supporter. She would meet with staff, ask for their views, understand what their issues were. She would meet with staff and, and try to find out what was going on in the field so when her, her staff were out at the banks, what were the banks saying about Phoenix? What were the banks saying about themselves internally? What were the banks saying about the competitors? She'd gather all that information. Uh, Kyle would also meet with bankers to find out what their opinions were. And that's not easy to do. If you try to get a meeting with the president of a bank, it, I don't know if you'd be successful. You can only imagine 34 years ago being a female entrepreneur in the tech industry. Your clients, the Canadian financial institutions, and your main competitor, the likes of IBM. That's determination. Kyle realizes her fortunate success and the importance of giving back. She exemplifies this generosity through many charities and individual support. Kyle's business successes seem to fuel her philanthropic goals and help those around her. 
In fact, she has supported and built several scholarships at Ivy, Russia, and even at Malvern, her, own, her old high school in Toronto. She's become highly involved in the David Foster Foundation and is now one of their cherished friends and supporters. And she's also been a strong advocate of Canadian military veterans working with the St. Joseph's Healthcare Foundation. Kyle's been able to improve the lives of veterans working at Parkwood. After many trips around the world, working 60, 80, 100 hour work weeks, and after 28 unforgettable years, Kyle knew her vision was complete. In 2015, Kyle decided to sell Phoenix to a 20 plus year competitor, Diebold, a multi billion dollar organization. If you're getting beaten and you're this kind of a large public company, why don't you just buy uh, Phoenix and, uh, and compete that way? Uh, which I think is ultimately what the game plan was for uh, Diebold that bought uh, Phoenix. Uh, I mean, once again, I think uh, Kyle uh, negotiated a fabulous deal for herself. Uh, in typical Kyle style, she was not shy uh, about the, uh, the value of her company and she, uh, she put it out there and, uh, and she got what she, was, what she was after. I see in every deal, there's always a little bit of seller's remorse because, I mean, you grew this thing. I mean, this thing grew from nothing, right? This grew from a single room and, and a few people into a, uh, you know, a, a large organization that competed on the world stage. So it's not always easy to, to let that go. Kyle jumped right back into business the same year and created Harbor Grace Holdings and made an investment in and assumed the CEO position of Area Brands Incorporated, a leading London-based manufacturer of indoor ventilation and air purification systems under the well-known brand Life Breath. Family rooted, a very successful entrepreneur, community focused, Kyle McDonald is very deserving to be the newest member of the London and District Business Hall of Fame. As an entrepreneur, leader, and truly authentic and humble individual, it is with great pleasure that we honor Kyle McDonald with her induction into the Junior Achievement London and District Business Hall of Fame. Kyle, who inspires so many. Now let's go to Kyle herself as she shares her thoughts on receiving this prestigious recognition. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here tonight. It's a little different format than what we were all hoping for in 2020, but, but thank you again for taking the time to join us. Uh, we, John and I especially would have loved to have have you with us in person, but the one positive side of this is that now I've been able to invite many friends and family who would otherwise have not been able to attend. So to those of you that are here uh, virtually with us, thank you very much for taking the time to do this. Thank you as well to the Junior Achievement Board of Directors uh, for selecting me as one of the inductees into the London Business Hall of Fame. It's a tremendous honor to have been selected and it's, it's an amazing feeling to join such a group of esteemed, esteemed successful business executives uh, that have already been named into the Hall of Fame. Um, it's an honor to be recognized and just lovely to be able to share this with all of you. I wanted to say a special thank you to, to Doug and Fred, Paul and Marco, who also took time out of their busy schedules and busy lives to talk about me and tell stories about our journey together. Each of them uh, uh, and others uh, have been very important stakeholders in our business and in my success in my career and we've, we've had a lot of fun together. Uh, we've had some challenging times, of course, as we do when we run businesses, but, but it's been just lovely. And I, and I now consider these people my personal friends as well, not just business associates. So there's always a, an extra plus that comes out of these situations. You know, to start a high technology software company in London, Ontario, and to turn it into an international powerhouse took a lot more than just my energy and my enthusiasm. It, it took an amazingly talented team of people, 
uh, to grow the business to that level. And I wanted to say thank you to that team. Uh, as you know, success is never about one person acting alone, right? It's, it's about a team of people coming together with a lot of creativity, a lot of energy, enthusiasm, and talent, and pulling that all together with a whole lot of courage and a whole lot of perseverance in order to win. Um, you know, I, it was a really big challenge when we started to take on an oligopoly, and there was no way we were gonna be successful doing that unless we surrounded ourselves with some really, really talented people. And then to stand shoulder to shoulder with, with fellow Canadians and take on some giant corporations from other parts of the world, well, wow, it's just a, a, a hope of a lifetime and a journey that is just so special. So thank you very much. I'm often asked about you know, questions about your success. And one of the things, especially younger people ask me about a lot is, is work-life balance. And I, and I always make a joke about that a little bit because in those days when I was starting Phoenix, there was no work-life balance. And in fact, one of our mottos at Phoenix was world domination is a full-time job. And it was a really big full-time job. I mean, you know, my friends were, had more normal, typical careers and, you know, we were all busy working 80, 100, 120 hour works, work weeks, traveling around the world, away from home. It was just a totally different life, but certainly a labor of love. And the success was, was a great reward for the sacrifices, you know, we had, we had to make to achieve that success. So what a privilege it was to, to work with those people and uh, I treasure all of their contributions to this day. And then of course in 2015 we sold Phoenix, sort of a bittersweet uh, moment, but it was the right time for me in my career to make that decision. And now we've started a new chapter with Harbor Grace and I'm busy now running area as well, uh, John and myself. And it's a pleasure to have so many wonderful people on that team as well. And we, we know how much you do for me and John, and we very much appreciate the hard work, the dedication to what you do, and especially the loyalty that you all demonstrate to John and myself. It's, it's recognized and, and very much appreciated. So thank you for that. And speaking of John Franklin, my husband, uh, I have to say a few words about John because John, John was really my rock uh, in this whole process, right from the early days of even dreaming about starting a business, uh, right through till today. And he was always there to support me in everything I wanted to do. If I had to be away from home for weeks on end, traveling around the world, that was fine. He supported me. He always had great advice. Um, he always listened very well to whatever challenge it was I was faced with and, and he helped instill in me a confidence that I needed to take on that oligopoly, a confidence that I, I needed to open offices in other parts of the world to, to take a chance. You know, we, we say that in one particular occasion we really did bet the farm and it was John's confidence in me that helped us make that big decision and it changed the trajectory of our, our careers and, and the success of the company. So thank you, John. Um, you are my gray haired dude and those of you that know me well know that that was a, a term that we coined early in the early days when I needed a gray haired dude in the boardroom and some people didn't believe that a, a young lady of my age and not too much experience could really deliver on the promise that she was making. So I needed my gray haired dude with me to make sure they knew that there was someone around who could make sure we delivered. But uh, then quickly people discovered that I was, I could really stand on my own and, and I didn't need John, but he's been a tremendous support to me throughout my entire career. So thank you, John. So lastly, just to say thank you again to Junior Achievement, to the Board of Directors, to the management group, and all of the employees that made this evening happen. Thank you very much again for this honor. 
Uh, it's a tremendous recognition. Thanks to all of you that have taken time out of your lives to join us in this unusual um, format tonight. Uh, it's been fun and a pleasure for me. And while I wish we could have been together in person, I know I look forward to being able to, to have a glass of wine with you in the future. So I brought along a glass of champagne just so that we could all enjoy a little toast. Thank you again for your friendship, your support, and I really appreciate you being here with me tonight. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, Kyle. And now let's go live for the actual award being presented to Kyle by the CFO of Harbor Grace Holdings, Inc., Richard Hutchinson. Kyle, congratulations. Oh, thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. That's lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Such an inspiration. Thank you, Kyle, and congratulations again on this very well-deserved recognition. Our second Laureate Tribute video this evening takes a look at what makes the McLaughlin brothers, Ewart and Edwin, worthy of induction into the London and District Business Hall of Fame. Let's take a look. Humble, hardworking, integrity, caring, family. These are the words that exemplify two brothers, Ewart and Edwin McLaughlin. The brothers have a passion for their work and are always creating opportunities to better their community. The brothers are both influencers and change makers in their profession. Through their leadership and guidance, e, e Enterprise has flourished. Along with their professional achievements, the brothers' willingness to share their vast knowledge with the next generation sets them apart. Both Eward and Edwin spent the early part of their business life exploring different opportunities. Edwin owned a small excavating company, and Ewart dabbled in cattle hauling and farming auctioneering. But in 1979, they came together to start an unlikely business, a cheese shop, followed later by the manufacturing of frozen entrees. We started at the cheese house. Um, they thought, well, if the cheese was selling so well that maybe they could make some pizzas, and they started making pizzas and they sold so well, Ewart decided that maybe they should uh, buy some refrigerated trucks and put the pizzas on the road. So they went out and sold them to all the little towns in southern Ontario. We had quite a route. And that was going so well, they decided that maybe they'd add some entrees to that, like lasagna and cabbage rolls and stuff, and that went really well. So <laughs> they ended up buying a building in, in Tilsonburg and refurbishing it, making it into an assembly line and put some apartments and stuff upstairs. After dabbling in the retail cheese industry, they set their sights on something bigger and more challenging. They shifted their focus to the warehouse business in 1984. They bought the first warehouse in Woodstock. I don't know how they found out about it or whatever, they just did and they turned, it was an old uh, factory of some kind and they just cleaned it all out and changed it into warehousing. And that was not plant number one. It would be in the mid-1990s. Uh, I had a listing in Delhi. Delhi uh, was a former Benson & Hedges tobacco building. 500,000 square feet on approximately 30 acres. Um, it was a mess. I mean, there was no windows left in it. All the copper had been stolen. Um, multi-story, everything that you wouldn't want in an industrial building, it had. I call them building recyclers, and I've seen them do it many, many times. Take a, a I would suggest a property that no one would give the time of day and convert it into something magnificent. One of the genuine and sincere traits of the brothers is paying it forward. During their transition to the warehousing industry, they realized that they could not keep their focus on the concrete and excavating businesses they owned. They recognized the strength of their key employees and wanted to give them the opportunity to not only assist, but ensure the companies would continue to grow and retain the integrity of the brand. So I worked for Ed um, in Yurt for a couple years, which was called uh, East Elgin Concrete. Um, I always bugged them about uh, owning it. And then I was there for a couple years and uh, Ed and Yurt called me up and said they wanted to have a meeting with me. and. Uh, they sold me shares. At that time, there was 
uh, three owners, well, Ed, Yer, and John, um, they sold me their shares of the company, which led to me taking it over. They helped me out financially. Uh, it was very exciting for me at a young age. And from there, I proceed to five years later, um, they called me up one day and said, uh, we know uh, you really want the ready mix plant. It's part of what you do. We've kind of moved heavy into warehousing. So they gave me first opportunity to buy the ready mix plant, which I own now. They have something about them that makes you uh, get up every morning and, uh, and be good at what you do. They, they make you drive. For me, they make me drive to succeed. Failure to them is not a, it's not a word. Both Edwin and Ewart have leadership skills that have been developed organically. They put their trust in the employees. They give them an opportunity to grow and thrive within the organization. The harder we work, the luckier we get. And with each day, the brothers still believe in this philosophy. But they do it, they step up. If they tell you they're gonna do something, they'll do it. Well, I got a, I got a call from, from them to do the appraisal on actually this building here, the RJR building in Tilsonburg and uh, they had uh, purchased it from the tobacco manufacturer and we're in the process of converting it over to various warehouse and retail and, and alternative uses. So they wanted me to come in and do it. Now the, the funny part of the story is when I came in to do it, I looked at all the lease information that they had and I asked for copies of the leases. And according to them, they don't have any leases because everything is done with a handshake. So I, I fully understood that concept because they're old school boys. But I informed them that they would need to get leases for the lenders and before anybody would give them the kind of money they were looking for. So two weeks later, I ended up with leases for all of the property. The brothers have a deep sense of giving back. The fact that they can assist in helping, however big or small, comes from the heart. Well, they're very committed to the community. Um, an example would be the uh, uh, Tilsonburg Kinsman Club, who does great work in the community. Um, they bought the uh, Bridges Golf Course and done great work there. They bought the Delhi Building, Benson and Hedges, had a soccer field attached to it. They allowed the community to continue on with the soccer after their purchase. Business acumen runs through the McLaughlin family, with Edwin's son Paul and Ewart's daughters Catherine and Cassandra being given a moral compass to keep the integrity of the business for future generations and employees. The brothers continue to share their learned knowledge with the rest of the family as well, where the next generations have set their sights on the ice cream industry and other food-related businesses. The real testament to them is what they've created with their family and their children. I mean, how many people have 19 grandchildren or six grandchildren? And all their children are hard workers the same way. They all have their own businesses. And, uh, and the grandkids, your grandkids raise turkeys at Christmas and pick up eggs in the morning. And Edwin and Ewart McLaughlin, same goals, same vision. Same values, same principles, a lifetime of unconditional brotherhood. It is with great pleasure that we honor Edwin and Ewart McLaughlin with their induction into the Junior Achievement London and District Business Hall of Fame. What a wonderful story. It's wonderful to see their ongoing commitment to the community. And now, here are the McLaughlin brothers to share their thoughts on becoming laureate inductees. The first thing I'd like to say, this is quite a surprise, and it's a great honor to be uh, uh, inducted into the Business Hall of Fame. And I'd like to thank the uh, Junior Achievement Organization and their sponsors, Libro Credit Union. And also, I'd like to um, congratulate the uh, co-winner this year, Kyle McDonald. So, I will say, uh, we have been in business for uh, 40 years, so I guess I should say thank you to Ed for putting up with each other somehow, but uh, and it has been a good experience. We've had a lot of fun doing this, and uh, I will say that, uh, hey, nothing's easy, and we got to remember in business it doesn't happen overnight, but Ed, maybe you can thank some more people. 
Well, there's many to thank, especially our family. Uh, my son has been involved with us for 25 years now. We started uh, 40 years ago, as you just said, we celebrated our 40th this year. So we, I guess you could say we tried many different things along the way. We started out in the retail cheese business, went on into construction. I always enjoyed in construction. We were both born on a farm. I knew I wasn't going to be a farmer. So going forward from that, we always enjoyed building, construction, and that's our mainstay now is properties and buildings. So, and to get there, we have had a lot of good people as far as operators, equipment, our girls in the office, they always make us look good too. And uh, just many people we've worked with to achieve as many properties as we have today. So also uh, like to thank some of our partners. We have several partners and that's due to, in our business, a very high capital cost. And also when you partner up with people, lots of times they'd like to be a piece of their, their building instead of just leasing. So we've partnered with them and that's worked out really well. Uh, going forward, we've in the London area, of course, this is London and district, of course, but a lot of our roots are here in <coughs> Tilsonburg, Ingersoll, Delhi area, but also partnered up in London with a couple of different families and uh, especially with the um, on the uh, Kellogg site with uh, the Leach family and uh, with the General Motors property the Arts family but uh, that's just some of I think that's been a great asset to us as well. Yeah and I also want to go for it like as far as uh, business in general we have a few statements, or not statements, but theories that we believe in. You always have to be completely honest and open with everybody. We found that works well. And work together. If Once we know your needs, we try to work with it. And we're a family with our customers as well. I'd also like to thank my wife, who's put up with all our antics. Sometimes we put in a long day, because that's the other thing we've always said. If you work hard enough at anything, it will work. So to the new business people coming, youngsters coming up, which we're talking about here today, the biggest thing I can say to you is you have to be dedicated, you have to work hard, and it doesn't matter whether it's a Saturday or a Sunday, the week never ends. That's my opinion. And talking junior achievement, I'm very proud of my family too as well. I had six daughters, two of them, Katie and Cassandra work with us here and is part of E&E. &E. Three of them, Christine, Kim and Kelly, own Shaw's Ice Cream. I think locally everybody knows that. And my other daughter, Carrie, has a frozen food store. And the end it all, the, the best thing I can say is I had a really great wife, Beth, who uh, stood beside me all the time, helped raise kids, and is a great partner. I'd also like to add, uh... I didn't have quite as many children as my brother. I had two, as you know, I mentioned my son previously, but uh, also my daughter, Jennifer, who is uh, RN, as well as running a store on the side. And she's a busy girl because she has four children. So there's no rest there either. The other thing is everybody talks about experience. Wherever you go, they want experience. Well, experience is not only knowing what to do, it's what not to do. So we've had lots of different experiences and it's been gone along with our business ventures throughout the years. And the things that we think is just automatic, it's only because we learned them. And uh, it happens over time as well. So, and never give up. Don't listen, if you have a, a you gotta follow your dream, but it has to be a sensible dream as well because you still gotta put bread on the table. So. Uh, what, be dedicated, Ed says, and uh, just keep up the fight and you will be successful. We feel we're successful, but it's taken us 40 some years. <laughs> anyway, thank you again, everybody, and have a good night wherever you are. Yes, I'm with you. It's too bad uh, we didn't have the gala event because we do like to have a little fun and have a party. So our motto has always been work hard and play hard as well. So you can't just constantly be at the work table, but uh, you got to mix the two together. The other thing that uh, I meant to say to you is, as well is us being partners. We've been two of us, so two fingers 
is a lot harder to break than one. So if you can stay together, you see different views of any business, good or bad, up and down. We're very fortunate because I think we do have the same thought pattern at the end. Now, I always had my things to do, he had his things to do, but we knew what each other were doing. So a partnership is one of the strongest things you can have. And I know there's, everybody says, well, how can you get along? How do you? Fortunately, we do. And uh, a partnership is a great thing as long as you can give and take and you're not always right. So it's enjoyable. We've had a great time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We're now going to Tilsonburg, where the McLaughlin Brothers Award will be presented by their wives, Maureen, Edwin's wife, and Elizabeth, Ewart's wife. Congratulations, Edwin and Ewart, and thank you for sharing your amazing story. Now that you've seen these wonderful tributes, we hope that you'll give some thought to those business leaders who have inspired you over the years, leaders who should be considered for this prestigious honor next year. You'll find all of the details on the nomination process on the jacanada.org slash SWO website. I'm actually sorry to say that our evening has come to an end. Thank you all so much for joining us. And don't forget to check out the silent auction and get your 50-50 tickets before the October 29th deadline. And be sure to share the links through your social media networks. The more people participating, the more money raised for JA programs. I'm sorry to see the evening end as well, David. It's been great sharing the screen with you. But before we sign off, I'd like everyone to mark their calendars for October 21st, 2021, when hopefully, we can gather in person to celebrate next year's laureate inductees in person. Congratulations again to our 2020 Braille Cop winner, Angela Lowe, and our esteemed 2020 laureates, Kyle McDonald and Edwin and Ewart McLaughlin. That's it. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night, night, David. Good night, everybody. Good night, Angela.